Hello everyone, and welcome to this STM32 Trust App Notes video series on STM32 security. My name is Maurizio Gentili, Security Application Engineer at ST in the Microcontroller Division, and I will guide you through the TFM package for STM32, a secure boot and secure firmware update solution offered by ST. Let's start with the agenda. First, we are going to go through an introduction of the TFM solution for STM32 microcontrollers. Then, we will go a bit more into the details of the ARM Trust firmware AMP solution, focusing on the architecture and offered features. We will then present which microcontrollers are supported in the current implementation. Next, we will focus on the protection measures and on the security strategy that ST used to enhance the implementation for ST32. And finally, we will share where you can find all the resources that you may need to move on with your project. TFM provides a root of trust solution, including secure boot and secure firmware update functionalities, and at the same time, it offers secure services at runtime, as specified in the TFM architecture and described in, in ARM PSA specification. This implementation is based on the open source ARM TFM reference code, enhanced by ST to benefit of STM32 hardware security features. The application is delivered as part of STM32 Cube package, and it is PSA level 1 and level 2 certified. The first service provided by the TFM package is Secure Boot that implements the system root of trust. It is an immutable code. It is always executed after system reset. It is responsible for checking the status of STM32 static protections and for enabling STM32 runtime protections in order to protect sensitive data and operations. As with any Secure Boot loader, it verifies the authenticity and integrity of the application code before executing it. Integrity is verified in order to be sure that the image that is going to be executed has not been corrupted or maliciously modified. The authenticity checks aims to verify that the firmware image is coming from a trusted and known source in order to prevent unauthorized entities to install and execute code. Starting from this trusted component, every other component is then authenticated before its execution. The second service offered by the TFM package is the Secure Firmware Update, an immutable code in charge of detecting that a new firmware image is available and of checking its authenticity and integrity before installing and executing it. Examples are provided for single and dual slot configurations. In single slot, the current firmware is replaced by the new one, allowing you to maximize the firmware image size but removing any possibility for a rollback to the previous firmware image in case of issues during the update. The dual slot configuration requires a bigger amount of flash, but it enables a safe image installation, and it is commonly used for over-the-air firmware update for IoT devices. The firmware update can download either a single binary including both the secure and non-secure parts of the firmware image, or two different binaries, secure and non-secure independently. Firmware update supports internal and external flash configuration. So, what are the steps of a typical firmware update procedure? The first step, a new firmware is created and stored in the server. Then, the new firmware is sent to the device deployed in the field over a potentially non-secure channel. The firmware image stored in the server and sent over the communication channel could be encrypted depending on the firmware configuration, so that only authorized devices that have access to the encryption key can decrypt the firmware package. At this point, the new firmware image is downloaded, checked and installed. Integrity is checked to be sure that the received image is not corrupted, while authenticity is verified to prove that the firmware image is coming from a trusted and known source. In addition to the Secure Boot and Secure Firmware Update, TFM Package provides secure services at runtime, a set of upgradable services managing critical assets that are isolated from non-secure code. With this approach, non-secure applications don't have direct access to critical assets. The secure service will export specific APIs to allow the non-secure code to perform operations with the critical assets without ever exposing it. For example, considering a sensitive key, non-secure code could use a secure service to encrypt or decrypt confidential information using that key, without ever having direct access to the key itself. Secure services are provided with two levels of isolation, enabled by the privileged and unprivileged mode usage. As we will see in the next section more in detail, the TFS specification defines secure services such as cryptographic services allowing crypt operations with obfuscated keys, Secure storage and internal trusted storage to protect data confidentiality, authenticity, and integrity in the device, and attestation to prove a device identity. Let's have a look at the middleware used by the STM32 Cube TFM application example. The first one is MCU Boot Middleware. It is the middleware that includes the open source implementation of MCU Boot, that is the foundation for the secure bootloader implementation of the TFM package. The second one is the Trusted Firmware Middleware, that includes the specification of the software components of the TFM solution, such as inter-process communication, secure partitioning, and interrupt handling. In addition, it includes the implementation of the secure services at runtime. 
The Embed Crypto Library is the reference implementation for PSA cryptographic operations for symmetric, asymmetric, and hash computation. It is used by both the MCU boot and the TFM middleware for cryptographic operations. This section will focus on the details of the TFM code architecture. This figure shows the building blocks of the solution and the isolation boundaries between them. The ARM TFM specification divides the architecture into two worlds. The secure processing environment on the right, that includes the SBSFU root of trust, and the TFM core and services, and the non-secure processing environment on the left that includes the application firmware and associated drivers. The isolation between these two worlds is guaranteed by the ARM Trust Zone that is configured to treat the secure processing environment as trusted and the non-secure processing environment as untrusted. On top of the repartition between trusted and untrusted, an additional isolation level is achieved through the privileged and unprivileged secure attribute. This allows for an additional isolation boundaries inside each of the two worlds. We will now review a bit more in detail the major building blocks of the architecture, focusing on the secure processing environment. The first block is the immutable PSA root of trust. It is a secure privileged service that includes the implementation of a secure boot and secure firmware update application. As the name implies, it is an immutable code that is executed after every reset and it is the unique entry point of the system. This application is based on the MCU boot open source software. The second block is the updatable PSA root of trust. It is a secure and privileged application that implements a set of secure services that can be called by the non-secure application at runtime via the PSA APIs. TFM currently supported services are Secure Storage Service, SST, that implements the PSA protected storage APIs, allowing to encrypt data and write the result in a potentially untrusted storage. The SST service implements an AES-GCM based encryption policy as a reference to protect data integrity and authenticity. The Internal Trusted Storage, AITS, that implements PSA Internal Trusted Storage APIs, allowing to write data in a microcontroller built-in flash memory region that is isolated from non-secure or from unprivileged applications by the hardware security protection mechanisms. The Crypto Service implements the PSA Crypt APIs that allow non-secure applications to use cryptography primitives such as symmetric and asymmetric ciphers, hash, or message authentication codes. It is based on the Embed Crypto open source software. The initial attestation service that allows the application to prove the device identity during an authentication process to a verification entity. The initial attestation service can create a token or request which contains a fixed set of device specific data. The TFM architecture is structured to allow the definition of third party services with trusted but unprivileged attributes. These services would be isolated from the privileged components of the immutable and updatable PSA root of trust. The current implementation of TFM today doesn't include any third-party service. So, which microcontrollers are currently supported by the TFM package? STM32Cube TFM application example is available today for STM32L5 only, that is the first STM32 with ARM Trust Zone support. Secure Boot and Secure Firmware Update reference code for other STM32 families are included in the STM32Cube expansion software XCubeSBSFU. We recommend you to refer to the dedicated video on Xcube SBSFU that is part of this STM32 Trust video series. The package includes two examples for STM32 L5, one basic configuration running on a Nucleo L552 board and an advanced configuration running on the STM32 L562 Discovery Kit. The first one is a TFM example code where security services have been removed and therefore it basically implements a secure boot and secure firmware update solution while the second one implements a full TFM solution and it is therefore the reference code for this presentation. So how to make sure that the root of trust is properly secured and which STM32 protection mechanisms can be used and combined in order to reach the highest level of security possible. The main goals of STM32 security APIs is to protect against inner attacks that are attacks triggered by code running in the STM32. They could be due for examples to malicious code exploiting bugs or security breaches or unwanted operations and other attacks that are triggered by external tools, such as debug probes trying to access the device. Security APIs used in the TFM reference code to protect against inner attacks are the ARM Trust Zone, the Memory Protection Unit, the Security Attribution Unit, the Global Trust Zone Controller, Write Protection, High Protection, and the Secure Backup Registers. For what it concerns outer attacks instead, the TFM package makes use of readout protections, the unique entry boot lock, a protected SRAM2, anti-tamper and debug access port deactivation, the independent watchdog, and the secure high protection. We are not going to describe all the security APIs in details in this video. We would recommend you to refer to STM32 security books videos on these topics that are available on ST.com. All the details on STM32 security APIs are also described in each device reference manual.
In addition, another useful resource for having a better idea on attacks and ST32 security APs is the application note AN5156, Introduction to ST32 Microcontroller Security. In this document, available on ST.com, you will find a description of possible attacks and which security feature is available on your ST32 and how they can be combined to achieve the best level of security for your device. The combination of these security APs allow the implementation to reach a maximum level of security. In particular, the security strategy followed for this implementation is based on the following concepts. First, create three protected isolated domains. The first one is the secure privilege for the PSA immutable root of trust. The second one is the secure privilege for the PSA updatable root of trust. And the third one is the secure and privileged for PSA application updatable root of trust. In order to protect the immutable PSA root of trust implementation, the security strategy is to ensure a single entry point at reset, to make sure that the authentication flow starts from a trusted code. To make SBSFU root of trust code and related secrets, keys, counters, and sensitive information immutable. To limit execution surface according to the application state, so that only the execution of SBSFU code is allowed at boot and until the application is verified. And finally, to remove JTAG access to the system's secure partitions. The STM32 hardware security APs are enabled and combined to implement a security strategy. Starting from the right, RDP is used to protect against access from the outside world, while the trust zone and the MPU protections are used to provide a runtime isolation between the trusted and untrusted domains. HDP, WRP, and boot lock are used to secure a single entry point and to make the PSA root of trust code and secrets immutable. For specific information, such as the entire back counters, WRP can be applied since the values will change during the lifetime of the device. In this case, HDP only is used to protect this sensitive information. Embed Crypto Software Library is combined with STN32 hardware acceleration for cryptographic operations in both PSA immutable and updatable root of trust. While Secure SRAM2 and Secure Backup Registers are used to protect sensitive data in the PSA updatable domain. Ok, we are at the end of this short overview and we just want to underline some useful resources that you can use to dive into more specifics. You can find useful information at the STN32 Trust landing page, which provides the best entry point to all the material and resources including the links and references for the STM32 security ecosystem from Theory to Practice MOOCs videos. Another important recommendation is to keep the following documents always in hand. The AN5156, that is the introduction to STM32 microcontroller security that we mentioned before. The AN5447, that is the overview of the secure boot and secure firmware update solution on ARM Trust on STM32 L5. And finally, the UM2671, a getting started with STM32 Cube L5 TFM application. Thanks a lot for your attention. Don't forget to visit the STM32 Trust landing page at st.com slash stm32trust. I look forward to seeing you in the next video of the series.